About three months ago, I did a 385 bench press at 178 body weight. This was definitely one of my greatest accomplishments, but I never made a follow-up video explaining exactly how I got there. I was so focused on quarantine advice and home training that my individual goals went aside. That said, now the gyms are reopening, people are starting to lift weights again. Allow me to talk about exactly what worked for me, and hopefully you too can benefit from this advice. And just so you know, it's what I'm going to do again moving forward. So the first ultimate lesson in bench press training is to focus on your weaknesses. This is something that I neglected for a very long time. As you know, I got very specific. I was doing lots of regular pause bench, dead benching, and just variations that were extremely similar to the classic style. But I noticed that there were certain variations in which I was extremely weak at. This namely included the floor press, incline bench, even overhead press, which is a different movement altogether. And when I would use things like the Swiss bar, I noticed an extreme drop in performance regardless of the variation. And I also realized that I neglected my band and chain work for a long time. So I decided to go back to my roots and I moved completely away from what got me the best results in 2018, 2019. It was a blast from the past and I can't tell you how happy I am with the gains. Basically, I identified shoulders and triceps to be my individual weaknesses. Therefore, all the special exercises for max effort work were dedicated to that. I document everything. You can go on Instagram, you can go on YouTube. I didn't film every single workout, but every week, I would have a weekly volume and intensity day, which is pretty much the same workout, except for the intensity day, I would start off with a one rep max. Now on that one rep max, there'll be about three attempts, no more than four. And the exercise was something that I hadn't done in a very long time, always different. You saw me do incline benching, close grip pause benching, band and chain presses. I did the floor press, floor press with chains, basically just rotating every single week and constantly getting PRs. And right after that, instead of doing, say, triples and fives, I perform high volume workouts, bodybuilder style. So there'd be a flat press of some type followed by an overhead press because I also realized that my OHP was significantly weaker by proportion. So I knew that if I balanced out that ratio so that it caught up to my bench, there would inevitably be carryover, especially since it was addressing my individual weaknesses. And that's the message I'm trying to stress. You gotta know what you're bad at and train the living hell out of it. Not only is this great for dropping your ego, it ensures amazing carryover. Guys, the last time I did a max effort regular bench was when I did the 395 touch and go. And that wasn't even a clean touch and go, it was a bouncy. So I would say that my bench was probably about 370, 375 tops, clean form. So I gained a good 10 to 20 pounds on my bench. I'm gonna say 15 being the most likely scenario. Not even by practicing it. See what I'm saying, man? Variations are so key. And I knew right away that I was terrible at all kinds of presses that were not the flat bench. I needed that range of motion increase. I need to be put in the joint angles that stress my body unique way. I was so bad at floor pressing. The first time I tested it, I believe I got a 330 one rep max, which is trash. I surpassed that years ago on my flat bench. My Swiss bar bench was terrible. I built up to 350 with a pause. Moment I got that, I was like, man, I know for an absolute fact that when I max out on the bench, it's gonna be a PR. Just off that, just off the fact that I improved on those weaker lifts. Now, how do I address the wrong weakness? There wouldn't have been the same degree of carryover. So realize that as you get more advanced, the variations that got you there may not be part of your main rotation. It might change depending on your weaknesses. And for me, that was getting rid of the dead benching and other stuff that you see me do for a while. So that's the first part of this video. I talked a little bit more than I should have, but I wanted to explain it all. The second thing that was really helpful for me was the usage of three week waves. See, with my training philosophy, I have a tendency of rotating lifts very frequently, which I still do, especially on the max effort lifts. Never do I repeat that. But there were certain accessory movements that I could have milled for a little bit longer, specifically the bodybuilding work when I'm doing three sets of eight to 12. So I decided to use three week waves. And there were two major methods of doing so. For example, on the bench press, week one might be 275 for three sets of 10. Week two, four sets of 10. Week three, five sets of 10. Only after completing that sequence would I rotate the variation. And when I rotate, I would bring it back to three by 10 and keep repeating that process. And this way, there's a little bit of waving, but it's not like linear periodization. And given the higher volume of my system, which just so you know, I add an extra press, I felt like this was very beneficial to my recovery. So I was always seeing some progress. That was one way of doing it. Or I would keep the sets and reps the same, but increase weight very slightly. And I remember doing this on the bench with chains. 
So week one, three by 10 with 205. Week two, 215. Week three, 225. So in this way, I jumped at 10 pounds every single week, but my volume was kept the same. And then I would just rotate. It's as simple as that. So three week waves were extremely powerful. And it's something that I'm definitely going to keep doing uh, for upper body and lower body. And if you want more information on this topic, check out my full video on three-week waves. There's many more approaches that you could use. But that was one of the major ones for my supplemental work. And besides that, there's not much for me to say training-wise. I feel like the introduction of bands and chains was an excellent idea because it allowed me to push the terrible exercises with more variation. So I was able to milk the Swiss bar stuff a little bit longer, the floor pressing, the inclines. Instead of just going from, say, close grip to wide grip or pause, touch, and go, like, I was able to make it a bit crazier, but I'm still addressing my weaknesses, right? So besides all that, we got to talk about the diet aspect. As you know, I maintained a pretty lean body weight for a long time, usually between 163 to 167, which was excellent. I felt very healthy. I looked good. And I'm definitely going to do another cut probably soon actually. But I realized that this weight reduction was holding back my bench press. Um, although there's nothing wrong with recomping or just trying to stay as lean as you possibly can year round, it's certainly not optimal for muscle gains or just strength progress as an advanced lifter. Does it work? Yes. Would I recommend it? Yes. But it doesn't compare to lean bulking. It just, it never will. I was hyper-focused on the bench, started eating in a calorie surplus and the progress was insane after that point because it was a long time that I hadn't done that. And this is just a correlation that I and many other lifters have noted every single time. The more weight you gain, it seems like the bench goes up tremendously. And I always suspected that had I hit the ultimate bear mode status, that a 4 or 5 would have been very realistic. Um, I still think I could do it, even at a lower body weight, but it's going to take a little bit of time. So that's one of the secrets. That's one of the hacks that you can do if you want to accelerate the progress. Don't try to stay as lean as you possibly can. And again, this is something I've been saying for years now. And yeah, that's really all I could say about my bench gains. I follow through with my plan. It worked extremely well, and it's what I'm going to keep doing. So when you see my training videos again, there's going to be no difference to what you saw at the beginning of 2020. I'm just addressing my weaknesses, using three-week waves, high volume, rotating. It's simple stuff, but it works. And I've proven to you time and time again on many exercises that this is a very good way to train for real naturals who want to maximize their muscle and strength results. So with that said, I'm done talking. Give me your feedback in the comment section and I'll see you in the next video.